In this video, we're going to take a quick look at what the Mavir Envy is and what its key features are. We're just going to touch on things at a high level just to get your feet wet. So let's start taking a look at the actual unit. So this is the Mavir Envy Extreme Mark II. The Envy Pro looks very similar. You can see here it's a four rack unit unit made of all aluminum. Let's just take a quick look at the rear of the unit. You can see we've got one HDMI input that will come from your AVR. We've got one HDMI output that will go to your display and a zero latency pass through should you need it. This is a look at what the MV backlit remote control is. And let's talk on the high level features. So there's a mnemonic that we like to use called Music HD. And that stands for M, Motion AI. Motion AI is the world's first AI based motion interpolation. And we're going to show you as we go into things why this feature is so special. The U stands for our AI based upscaling, and the MV can upscale to 4K, 5K, even 8K for really an extreme video quality output for your 1080p sources, whether that's your 1080p Blu rays or coming from your broadcast television. Next up is the S, stands for subtitle management. Okay, we'll touch on what that is in just a second here. The I stands for incredible nonlinear stretch. We need something that started with an I to make the mnemonic work well. But rest assured, the nonlinear stretch is quite amazing. We're sure you'll love it. We'll go into that in just a moment. As well as the C stands for control. What do we mean by control? All sorts of things. Whether you're talking about controlling the MV aspects such as convergence control, geometry control, remote access control, IP control, calibration control. There's all sorts of control that you'll have over your image that you never had before. The H in HD stands for HDR dynamic tone mapping. We'll get into that in just a second. As well as the D stands for detecting aspect ratios for instantly managing aspect ratios and being able to change back and forth without having to use lens memory or manually adjusting any lens. So just to take a quick look here at what we're talking about for HDR tone mapping. This is an example. These images here on the left are taken as uh, undoctored photos straight out of a projector that is known for having good HDR tone mapping as well as many of them do. But the Envy just takes things to a whole nother level. So you can see here the green is crushed out when you compare it to the side with the Envy as well as all the detail that is getting lost inside here or you could see here all the clarity and detail on Harry's face versus everything looking kind of blown out and washed over. This is the power of dynamic tone mapping. This is another example here where we can take a look at all the details like look at this area here in the headlight which is blown out compared to the Envy being able to restore this lost detail and you can see all the uh, detail here from the headlights. Likewise, if you take a look here, look at the loss of contrast in the street and in these little knit Lego knobs compared to what's down here and the clarity that's here. This is actually an aspect of our film mapping called contrast recovery. This is another aspect that we call highlight recovery. As you can see up here, Highlight recovery restores details that are normally blown out and crushed in the brights. So look at all the intricate details here and how here it's just kind of washed over. Likewise, this whole inner dome, you see it's just kind of like crushed out compared to all the extra clarity and detail found here. Now we're getting to detecting aspect ratios. So you can see here, this image is on the top. This image is um, fit for scope screen. Um, and then what happens is when the image is 16 by nine, the Envy will automatically fit it. Because for those that are familiar with scope screens, when you zoom out to fill a scoped image, then what happens is when it switches to 16 by nine, your image winds up up here and also down here. So with the Envy, you're gonna zoom out once to fill your image and then you'll never touch lens memory again, ever. And then every time the image will deliver constant image height, meaning that no matter what the aspect ratio is, 
the MB will spill the image top to bottom, and then you'll have the sidebars, which of course naturally leads to the question of how do I get rid of the sidebars? Well, we're glad you asked because our nonlinear stretch uses a patent pending technique that both compresses vertically and stretches horizontally, and that allows us to share that geometric load across both axes. So you can see here, take a look at this football player. He's on the far edge of the image. And normally when we show people this, they're expecting the football player, especially near the end, to look very large and stretched and unusually so. But you can see here, his proportions look perfectly normal, as does the rest of the field. Now, you may notice that we have removed some of this additional information below and above compared to here. This is a user preference. This is something that we like to do. However, for those that want to keep every single pixel as it is, you have the option to do so. Now, what's also important to know is that the Envy can fit any aspect ratio content to any aspect ratio screen. So this goes for 16 by nine users too. Very important if you've got a large wall or a micro LED display or just a 16 by nine projection screen as well. So for example, those of you that have a 16 by nine screen are used to seeing giant black bars above and below the image when you watch a scope movie. With the Envy, you won't have that. You are able to remove about half of those top and bottom black bars while the image looks perfectly natural, giving you a much more immersive experience. Moving on to subtitle management, typically what you'll see here is this is you have a scope screen with a scope movie and a subtitle. Now, oftentimes, what you'll find is when you look at the image before you zoom it out, this is what it looks like with these black bars on all four sides. Then what happens is you zoom out each corner. So you zoom so that your corners go to the corners. Of course, when you do that, the image bottom moves down, down, down. And ultimately, that means that your subtitle wind up down here on the masking and on the wall. Likewise, the same thing would happen with any closed captions or titles at the top. So with the Envy, you're able to watch full screen like you see here. And then when the sub subtitles come, we simply move them up into the black bar. We, create a, we bring this black bar back, I should say, and put the subtitles in there. Whether you need one line of subtitles, two lines of subtitles, three lines of subtitles, will bring back just the same amount of black bars that you need to fit that image. Now, you may also notice that there are no black bars on the side. So for shrinking the image in order to bring back this black bar on the bottom, what happened to the black bars on the sides? Well, for that, we're layering, layering in a little nonlinear stretch that allows us to fill the screen completely on the left and the right while just bringing back just enough for you to be able to read the subtitles. So the end result is that you get to watch your image with subtitles on a scope screen like this instead of like this. Let's move along and talk about motion AI. So for those not familiar with motion interpolation, this is the art of adding frames where there are none. Now, a lot of people do not like motion interpolation because of the implementations in the past. Two main problems. Number one, the motion interpolation can introduce motion artifacts, basically creating problems while trying to solve another problem. These artifacts can be distracting and can lead people to turn them off. The other thing is that dreaded soap opera effect where all of a sudden the image no longer looks cinematic. So what we did is we set out to create the world's first AI-based motion interpolation in a dedicated video processor. So as we like to say, we didn't create motion interpolation. We're simply trying to be the first to perfect it. So here's some common examples. As you can see, these windows, this, these lines are supposed to be connected. Or in here, you can see the halo of her face. Likewise, the halo that's happening here or broken parts of the image such as here and also on the off side and the on side, you can see like his face is present here. His face is missing here. So these are artifacts like judder, tearing, blurring, and, and the soap opera effect that you will find with most other uh, motion interpolation options. So with the Envy, what we did is we are using AI to create a motion interpolation that can be run without creating most of these same artifacts now, it's not perfect, but we're getting close. And the other big benefit is you can control the soap opera effect. 
very granularly. So for instance, you can use just the slightest amount to undo, or you should say counter, the effect of sample and hold and displays, which is just a fancy way of saying kind of undoing some of the exaggerated motion blur and judder that displays themselves can introduce to get back to the original director's intent, but just using our lowest mode, which we call cinematic. There's also five other modes that get stronger as you go up for those that really prefer that stronger, crisper, clearer image. So whatever your preference is, then the more that you can really take advantage of what the Envy has to offer. That's it in a nutshell. Let's move on to our next lesson.